Hi, I'm Dario Denhoff from the team here at Envimat. Welcome to today's live demo. We will cover all the relevant basics of Leonardo. And now let's head over to today's topics. Today's topics are, first of all, an overview of Leonardo, what kind of Envimat, uh, what kind of outputs Envimat writes, and a whole workflow of visualizations. So first of all, let's head over to Leonardo. Um, there's basically three areas. On the left, where my cursor is, you can see the settings where you adjust the map content. In the middle, you will see the map. And on the right, you can load in the data. Regarding the data, let's take a look at what kind of outputs Envimet writes in the first place. So here, we have an output folder. Um, the output folder has various subfolders that hold files like the atmosphere folder um, and buildings, among other things, like a soil folder or a surface folder. And this just guarantees that you have a simple overview at what data you want to take a look at. An output file is always a pair of two files. You have an EDT and an EDX. The EDX is the descriptive file that describes the EDT, and the EDX is the file that you will load into Leonardo. You can open the EDX also in the text editor and see the description of the file. So let's take a look at this line, you can see different variables, objects, flow, the u, v, and w vectors, wind speed, among other things. This is a very small file that just references to the EDT file. The EDT file is a binary file format, and it's a very it holds very a lot of uh, data uh, in this type, 250 megabytes. So let's take a look at the data we want to visualize. So we go to our folder where we have the outputs and go to a certain output time step and load in the data. And if you have any questions, you can always put them into the comments. So first of all, we, uh, we loaded the atmosphere file. Let's think about what we want to take a look at. The most popular uh, parameter will be the air temperature. So we will go to data and select the potential air temperature. And then the second thing we need to think about is in which height we want to take a look at it. Since NVMet is grid-based, uh, we can select the position of the view plane uh, in the X, Y format. So this will be a top down uh, view. And this will take a slice out of the certain height level you choose. We usually go within the first three cells depending on the resolution. So on the right side, you can also see when, when you click at it, um, the height at which you will take a look at. And in this case, it will be 1.75 meters. And then we will simply click on Extract 2D. And this might take a moment depending on the size of your model area. And it seems that he will be finished soon. Um, and again, if you have any pressing questions, just, just put them into the chat. And now we can see an overview of our model area with the output, with the potential air temperature. Regarding the temperature, we always have a default settings. The default settings are um, this is this color palette and that the palette will start in the middle. The color palette is always, or well, most of the times, made up of 20 colors. Um, in this case, it's a color palette with uh, 20 colors, but the color index is set to 10. So the legend will start in the middle, here where my cursor is. 
it's already looking pretty nice, but depending on what you want to visualize, we can select different color palettes. So for parameters like potential air temperature, we always recommend the palette big. So let's just select them. And then we think maybe we want to take a look at the whole legend. So put the whole range of the colors into the map. So first of all, we need to set the color index where the uh, values will start at zero. So it will start in the blue part and go all the way to the red part. Next, we will need to disable auto fit. And this all already changes uh, the map content. But uh, don't be scared. It uh, will get fixed soon. So let's set the number of colors to 20 so we can get the whole range. And now, in the map, you can see the max and min values of your data. You will need to calculate it and uh, calculate the difference, um, the range of your data. So 38.01 minus 33.84 degrees. This will give you the range of your data. To get it accordingly to the 20 steps, you will need to divide that by 20 and round it to the third degree. And then we get 0 0.209 as a step size. So let's put it just there, 0 0.209. And lastly, you will need to set the first value in legend to the minimum value. So 33.84 degrees. And now, Let's click on update. Now you can see the whole range of the color palette in your model area. You can see the coldest parts, even though they're still pretty hot. And you can see the hottest parts from the deep blue to the deep red. So if you want to take a look at a single cell throughout the whole time of your simulation, you could either go with your cursor above one cell and look at the bottom. Uh, it, it appears here. You can look at the bottom, but that would be extremely tedious. So you can just simply right click and select Explore Grid. This will open a second window where you can set the time series or uh, also again with right click and then select time series to whole range. And then on the right side, you can select different variables. So let's select the potential air temperature. That's already pretty interesting. But then if you want to take a look at the correlation with, let's say, the direct shortwave radiation, uh, you can do that. Since the absolute values are quite large, you can also put the second a parameter, the direct shortwave radiation on the right axis. And there you can see um, the correlation between the shortwave radiation and the temperature. And you can see the time delay it takes for the surface to heat up and cool down again. You can also export this data to an Excel sheet. If you just click on Export Sheets, this will select, uh, there you need to select um, a folder. We just put it into our project folder, select export. And then we can take a look at it in our project folder and open it in Excel. And here you will see all 24 time steps and have a lot of data regarding the wind direction among many other parameters. Are there any questions up until now? Raul Bogdano, can I also load outputs from network graph? That's actually a great question. Yes, you can do that. And you can also when you run your simulations right onto network uh, drives directly. So if you're working 
uh, in, in a larger project with uh, different people in, in your group. Um, and you have a, a server where uh, in your network, you can set the output folder in your simulation directly to the network drive and you will not have to copy everything from different uh, machines over to the network drive so everyone can access it in your network easily. That's a great question. I did lots of simulations, but I did not enable NetCDF before the simulations. Analysis would take ages now. Can I get the NetCDF files afterwards? Usually it's recommended that you enable it in, in the configuration file, but you can actually um, export this map to NetCDF. It's important that you bef beforehand uh, you select any parameter and extract it into 2D, and then you can export it to NetCDF and analyze later. So yeah, if you, if you haven't enabled it, um, you can uh, access it later as a NetCDF, but you need to export it. So, ah, there's another great question. Which color ramp would you recommend for different variables? Thank you, Amy. Um, for the potential air temperature, um, we always recommend big as it goes from blue to red and is easily understandable for people who are not um, in the scientific community, but are there to make decisions. Um, if you're an urban planner and need to yeah, show your results to someone uh, in, to some policy makers or, or similar. Um, those, um, the, the big would be put, uh, great for the potential air temperature. Um, if we go, if, if you want to show, let's say the humidity, um, the aroma inverted would also be great because you can select it either from the middle. So at the color index 10 up to 20 and or if, if you have a great range in differences, um, you can use the whole um, color palette and that would also be easily understandable for people that are not familiar with your projects. Is it possible to edit step size on horizontal and vertical axes of the plots in EnvyMed? If you mean the axes here on the map, you can easily do that. So let's say we do the main labels at 100 meters and the small dashes at 10 meters and on the separate axis as well. And you click update, you will get a better overview. So you have 100 meter dashes and 10 meter dashes. That's great to hear that it helped. Amy, you're, you're exactly right. The next step will actually be comparison maps. So we have taken a look at one scenario. So the next step would be to select the um, second scenario. And before we load it, it is, it is highly important that when you want to compare two scenarios, that the model dimensions are exactly the same. Otherwise, EnvyMed can't compare them. So let's take a look at the second scenario, load it into file set B. This also takes a moment. And now, if we only want to look at the differences directly and are not interested in taking a look at the um, files itself, we can click directly on compare to D, but just for the sake of it, let's extract it in 2D. So in the data source, you need to um, uh, go to file set B and also click on extract 2D. This will take a moment. And um, while we do that, if you have any other questions, you can put it, them in the chat. And after this part regarding um, the comparison, we can take a look at the questions later. 
So now it uh, has loaded the, the other scenario. And since we just wanted to take a look at it, you can, can see also again the hot part, but the range has yeah, shifted a bit. So going to the comparison, back again to extract data to map, and then you need to click on compare 2D. When comparing two scenarios and clicking on compare 2D, it will always be it's the scenario and file set A minus the scenario and file set B. So file set B gets subtracted from file set A. That, that's very important to note. So you know um, which scenario is hotter and which is not. So now that it has been complete, uh, completed, the scale and the map looks weird. So not to worry, we can adjust it easily. Um, similar to how we did uh, in the first place, we still use the big color ramp to um, describe the temperature difference. Um, now we have the color index zero and the number of classes at 20. We leave that be. But now we need to think about what kind of step size we need to choose. In this case, since the range goes from negative degrees to positive degrees, um, and we want white or this white-ish color to be in the middle, so at zero degrees difference, we need to calculate the minimum value and divide it by 10 and the absolute minimum value. So not minus 0 0.94, just 0 0.94 by 10. So it's 0 0.094 as the step size. And the first value in legend will be the minimum value. So zero minus 0 0.94. And then we will click on update. And here you can see that in a lot of areas, the difference is marginal or non-existent. Uh, and in other areas, such as in this courtyard, you can see that here it is a lot colder than in other areas, uh, in, in the um, other scenario. So yeah. I see that Emir wrote something again. Yeah, that's yeah, it's great to have uh, just an easy workflow to to visualize the differences and to make it easy to understand. And all right, Anya Lev, is it possible to cut my simulation area to, into a smaller sub area if I want to focus on a specific section? Yes. This is possible. So if we want to take a look at, let's say, these three buildings with the courtyard, you can go into the map with your cursor, right click, and then set the upper left marker here. Right click in the other part and set the lower right marker the, here. And then you can cut the map to window. And this will delete all data outside the actual map. You want to proceed, yes. And now you can take a detailed look at it. I hope this answered your question. Are there any other questions? I saw maps where the wind vectors were colored by air temperature, like blue, cold, and red hot. How is that done? That's also a great question. Uh, let's take a look at it. We will just quickly extract it again uh, to go back to the entire map. And then we will soon enable the wind ve vectors by right-clicking on vector settings. Those are a lot of vectors. 
So we enable draw random vectors, and usually in this model, uh, we would do 5,000. If you update it, then they, they are random vectors. And just for, the, for visibility's sake, let's disable the data layer. Um, since we want to show both the vector and the temperature just by using the vectors. So it is important that you have the vector settings enabled and to better understand the wind speed, you can right click vector legend and here you will see by the length, length of the vector how fast the wind speed is. To enable that you can see the uh, air temperature in the vectors. You just click on use data layer color. So now the vectors are colored by the potential air temperature, but they are hard to read. So let's lengthen them a bit. It's always recommended to use 0 0.02. And now you can see the vector length. Are there any other questions? Adam, is it possible to show results from different heights on the same map? For example, if there are platforms or bridges in my project, it's only possible for model areas that feature topography. If you don't have topography enabled, it is not possible. Luana, could you make a map that shows the wind speed with the direction of the flux? So um, we can extract the um, do you mean the temperature flux or the shortwave radiation or what kind of flux do you mean? If it takes a moment to, to formulate, uh, it's no problem. All right. If, if the question still occurs, we will uh, take a look at it later. So we will continue. Um, now we have taken a look at the two-dimensional visualization. But NVMet is a three-dimensional model which means that we can also look at it in three dimensions. So if we go to file set A again and go into the extract set A to 3D map, we can extract the potential air temperature again to extract 3D. This might take a while again, since it loads a lot of data, um, but it will be the greatest, um, yeah, it's a great visualization. So people will easily understand um, the information you're trying to convey. So here is our model in 3D. We can navigate through it and we loaded the potential air temperature, but why isn't it showing? That is because the data layer needs to be enabled. So, and we also enable legend by right clicking on it. And let's zoom out for a bit. And now, why is there a giant cube? That's because the results are loaded from the whole three-dimensional space. So if we only want to take a look at one certain height level, like we did in two dimensions, we can enable filter by location and go in the Z axis as we did three and update. And now we can see the potential air temperature in 1.75 meters um, and navigate through 
the model domain. So now we visualized the potential air temperature in three dimensions, but the buildings are there. Can we also visualize the buildings in the same map as the potential air temperature? Yes, we can. But before we do that, we need to talk shortly about the building outputs. We have both dynamic and static building outputs. Static outputs are written once in the first time step. Those are just information about static parameters that don't change throughout the day. So let's say the albedo of a certain building, the emissivity, etc., the volume of, of the building. Um, that isn't that interesting for us. We rather want to take a look at the dynamic section. And here again, just like the other output folders, for every hour an output is written. So if we take a look at it now, we want to set the data to unchanged and then go to file set A and now load the building section for the same time step, so 4 p.m. And now the data and ISO 3D and everything else is disabled. We can't do anything about that. But now facades 3D is enabled. And if we select temp uh, wall temperature node 1, which is the outside temperature, you can extract the facade. And you need to keep in mind, you will see that soon when, when it's all extracted. Since it all also loads something in 3D, the um, potential air temperature in the area will be overwritten. So going back to the data layer 3D settings, filtering by location, and then we need to put in 3 and 3 and again. So now, same as with the data layer, we need to enable the facade layer. And now you can see there's the potential air temperature in 1.75 meters. And at the same time, you're visualizing the wall temperature of the buildings. Since it's 4 p.m., the eastern parts of the buildings are already a bit cooler compared to the western parts, as you can see here. But if we enable the legend, you might be a little bit surprised that the colors don't really match the legend. This is because the 3D renderer of NVMet uses OpenGL, and to and this renderer also uses a lighting model. So if we uncheck the option, this will reduce the three-dimensional effect a bit, but it will stay true to the colors of the legend. So now you can see the entire range of the legend in your buildings. And this is a great way to both um, facilitate information about the potential air temperature and wall temperature. And yeah, this uh, is a great way. Petra Schönemann asks, how do you move the view in 3D? You move the view if you hold shift and move your mouse, you will move around the area. If you hold shift and scroll down, you will zoom in. And if you scroll up, you will go out. If you hold control and move around, you can rotate the entire model area. Are there any other questions? How can I see the temperature values within the vegetation? I only see green from the vegetation all the time. The temperature values for the vegetation is for 2D maps, so in the special layer. Um, if you disable the uh, special layer, you will see the air temperatures where the, where the vegetation is. 
So if we want to take a look at it again, um, here you can see the trees. And when, if you remember, I can go back to it um, just, just to get, get a better overview. If we load the um, atmosphere folder again um, and take a look at the air temperature in three meters in two dimensions, you will be probably wondering why you can see most of the trees. And this is due to the fact that um, we extracted it at 1.75 meters. So if we extract it and um, this might take uh, a moment again, if we extract it, um, we will see that those trees are missing. And if we go up a bit now, let's say go to 8.75 meters where a lot of trees their crown will be located at. Um, the probability that we will see the trees there is a lot higher. Yeah, right here. So you need to always keep in mind at what plane you're currently looking at. So now we are doing a top down view of the model area in a height of 8.75 meters. So that's an X, Y cut. When we do an X, Z cut, it will go from the front, let's say to, to us, the front of the model area to the back. And if we do a Y, Z cut, it will go from left to right. So if we go to, let's say, cell number five and extract it in 2D, we will see a uh, front view of the of the model area up to the ceiling of the model area. As you can see, those buildings were located in the bottom left, and now you will see a side view. If we do the same thing with Y Z, you will go from the left model uh, from the left part of the model area uh, and take a look at it there. That would be the left view. Okay, Luana, I just saw a question that you want to see the wind speed. Okay, so we go to back again, X, Y cut and go to 1.75 meters again, as we did the entire time. And then we will choose the wind speed. So we have the vectors, we will first need to enable them. And then we can take a look at the um, either the potential air temperature, or um, we I'm just gonna quickly need to take a look at the uh, vectors. And this will be the wind speed. And so, all right. So we will extract the wind speed. So you have the whole area filled with the wind speed. And then we will disable um, the vectors, um, the vector colors. So the speed is also by the length. So first of all, to get a better overview, disable use data as layer color. And then we can go back to the data layer and 
for wind speed, let's take some, some different colors. Let's say Emola. And then we can, we need to adjust the legend again. And now you can see the wind speed and both the vector length. So you see the area of the wind speed and the length of the vector also shows the speed of the uh, wind again. So you see the direction better and um, the um, area in the general area. Paolo asks a question, how is the axis labels changed and how to remove the map frame? This is also an important question. So we can go to the text and labels. In general settings, text and labels, uncheck the option draw map frame, and then we won't have a map frame. And the labels you can see here, um, we first, it's, it's a bit um, complicated. We first need to set up the legend again. Um, we will disable several legends so we can get a better look at it. Disable the symbol layers and re-enable the data layer. So if you want to not call it wind speed, but just wind. You can adjust the title here. And now it, the legend is only called wind. And then you can also change the axes and also change it to X axes and Y axes in meters, let's say. and update it, and this will change the axis labels. Another important thing you might not like is this: these footnotes, NVMet and right foot. You can go to text and labels and uncheck the option show footnotes. So now you have the most important information just shown in your map. And if you want to change the title of it, you can also do that. You can just call it scenario one, let's say, update it, and there you have it. And again, the subtitles of the, of the uh, main title are not important for some people, so you can just leave it empty if you want. And if you want to, let's say, put it down a bit, you can do a backslash, click on update, and the text will go one space down. So, Paolo asks, and how to export it to PDF? I want to have a PDF to have a vector graphics and not a raster image from a screenshot. That's a great question. Um, we can go to map again and then we need to go to print map and select adobe pdf and there you can select either vector mode as you wanted it to do or you can choose a bitmap so if you want to um, go to vector mode well my adobe license ran out but um, this this will um, print the map into um, into a PDF as a vector scale. Are there any other questions? Let's just take a quick look at it. Luana says, thank you very much. I appreciate that I could help you. Um, are there any other questions? How can I cut vertical cuts to see wind flow behind a building? 
Um, do you mean right behind right behind the building? Um, I would recommend that you go to the building and do an XZ cut. So if we want to take a look at the wind speed and go to the XZ and let's say at right behind the building, so we would do 129 and then we can either you can either take a look at the whole cut or you um, can also cut it smaller and then cut the map to the window cut the data again and then you can take a look at the xy cut uh, xz cut so let's try 125 this is at 313 meters that should be right about it all right we have the the building here and since the z axis goes up to the top of the model area you can also set another marker here and another marker on the bottom and cut the map to the window so you can take a closer look at it so now you can see um, the lee of the building where the wind flows over it um, and even in this case see a side cut of the trees and um, this might give you a lot of information on how the um, buildings interact with the wind flow in, in your model area. I'm happy that you could, could help. Paolo, it worked for you. That's great to hear. If there are any further questions, you can all also ask me them. Another trick um, that would be nice to know if, if you want to take a look at the differences, let's say of the potential air temperature again, like we did in the first example, um, but you want to show the wind field in the difference map. You can do that also. So I'm just quickly extracting uh, the data to go back to the um, potential air temperature. And now, since we have loaded it, um, we will compare them. And then once it is compared, we can do uh, the same trick as we did in the three-dimensional visualization uh, and disable the potential air temperature and then not compare it but extract it i will show you in a minute once once it's finished so now we have the potential air temperature difference we will set this to unchanged and then we can see the vectors and then we can see here flow u v and w and um, once we um, set them up uh, you can get a better overview of it yeah here so um to go back to our recommended color palette, I go back to big and then I need to disable out of it again. And we have already set the color index to zero and uh, the number of classes to 20. And now, as I told you before, um, it is always important to remember that when you want to use the middle value, the, the the zero difference to the middle value of the color ramp, you need to do it a tenth of the minimum value. So 0 
zero nine four and the minimum value minus zero point nine four updated and now you have a different map with the wind vectors how does the unchanged work what is unchanged now asks emir um emir the um the difference in the potential air temperature is unchanged so um we kind of grab the um potential air temperature difference hold it and um, go over the the data again while we extract the wind vectors this leaves the temperature layer unchanged because i extracted it in, in 2d if i went to potential air temperature and extracted it it would have uh, chosen the file set a uh, and removed the potential air temperature difference i can show you so if we extract it and then we will need to adjust the color scale again so it is always important now you can see it um, it is always important that you if the the thing you want to show and um that that you hold it in place with the unchanged feature and then uh, let's say in the vectors then you can change it so as we did before in the first example now we have uh, the first scenario we took a look at uh, in the beginning so that's the reason for why we need to set the data to unchanged after we have compared it if we want to enable the wind vectors from one scenario Shupam asks, are potential air temperature and air temperature same in NVMET? They are basically the same. The potential air temperature um, includes the pressure, but since NVMET um, uses or the, the yeah, mo most of the time you look at heights of between zero and let's say 10 meters, the pressure doesn't play that much of a role so you can view the potential air temperature as the same in NVMET. It's just for some calculations in the background. Um, NVMET, in NVMET, so basically in NVMET, the potential air temperature and the air temperature, can you can see them as the same. Are there any further questions? I'm just going to quickly wait a moment. Shubham, I, I'm happy that I could help you. That's nice to hear. OK. I guess there aren't any further questions. So. It's been great to show you the basics of Leonardo. If you are interested in diving deeper into Leonardo, um, Dr. Michael Bruse will do a live demo regarding the data studio and deeper data analysis with Leonardo in the coming future. So I'm happy that I've been here and showed you the basics and yeah have a nice day